There's no doubt that NASA's Space Launch System is an impressive sight. Standing at 322 feet tall, the Boeing-built SLS stretches twice the length of the space shuttle and is even taller than a football field that's been ripped from the Earth and rotated vertically. Powered by a massive L3 Harris engine core and two solid rocket boosters from Northrop Grumman, the SLS puts out 12% more takeoff thrust than the Saturn V. The rocket that first sent men to the moon. Sadly, although big rockets are nice, the SLS program is absolutely an irredeemable mistake, mainly due to the fact that its price is unaffordable. And surprisingly, the Inspector General just declared NASA should use commercial alternatives to the SLS. What did NASA Administrator Bill Nelson have to say about this? Let's explore everything in today's episode of Great SpaceX. A report by NASA Office of Inspector General released last week officially pointed out that NASA's goal to reduce the costs of the powerful Space Launch System rocket for its Artemis program by 50% was called highly unrealistic and a threat to its deep space exploration plans. The audit says the costs to produce one SLS rocket through its proposed fixed cost contract will still top two and a half billion US dollars, even though NASA thinks it can shrink that through workforce reductions, manufacturing and contracting efficiencies, and expanding the SLS's user base. Given the enormous costs of the Artemis program, failure to achieve substantial savings will significantly hinder the sustainability of NASA's deep space human exploration efforts, the report warns. Already, the Biden administration is requesting its largest NASA budget ever for the next fiscal year, although a Republican-led U.S. House is likely to kneecap some of NASA's requests. The audit looked at NASA's plans to shift from its current setup among multiple suppliers for the hardware to a sole sourced services contract that would include the production systems integration and launch of at least five SLS flights beginning with Artemis V, currently slated for as early as 2029. NASA's claim it could get those costs to $1.25 billion per rocket was taken to task by the audit. NASA's asked Operational goal to achieve a cost savings of 50% is highly unrealistic. Specifically, our review determined that cost-saving initiatives in several SLS production contracts were not significant, the audit reads. The report was the second in as many months critical of the costs of the SLS, a key element of NASA's Artemis lunar exploration architecture. A September 7th report by the Government Accountability Office, or GAO, criticized NASA for a lack of transparency on SLS costs as those costs grow under existing contracts. Senior agency officials have told us that at current cost levels, the SLS program is unsustainable and exceeds what NASA officials believe will be available for its Artemis missions, the GAO report stated. It acknowledged efforts like EPOC or EPOC to reduce SLS costs, but noted it was too early to evaluate how effective they could be. And now, NASA and Congress, which funds it and its programs, are faced with two painful options. The first is for Congress to swallow hard and fund the space launch system. After all, Congress imposed the SLS on NASA. Congress continued to insist that the heavy lift rocket be part of the Artemis return to the moon program, expense be damned. The legislative body would be hypocritical to suddenly discover that the SLS is a money pit just just at the moment when it is inclined to cut the federal budget. The second option would be to find some alternative to the space launch system to take astronauts to lunar orbit. The idea of using the SpaceX Starship to not only land on the moon, but to take astronauts from the Earth to the moon has been discussed elsewhere. The beauty of the option is that it would drop the cost of a human lunar exploration campaign by orders of magnitude. Lunar expeditions will also likely occur more frequently than once a year or once every two years. Musk has predicted that Starship Starship may cost as little as $10 million a flight and will launch hundreds of times before it even carries people. 
Several obstacles exist to a switch from the Space Launch System to the Starship. For one thing, the SLS that will be used for the Artemis II mission is already under construction. Some of the engines for the Artemis III mission, the first moon landing in over 50 years, has been delivered. Even if NASA retires the SLS, it will still be the center of the first few missions to the moon. And if we were to compare the two options, replacing it with Starship would probably be easier to deal with. In reality, the SLS was a rocket to nowhere. The SLS program was always unmoored from any practical space exploration goal since its start. At the time Congress appropriated funds for the SLS, there was no moon mission to design for. The Artemis program did not exist until the year of 2017. Author Rand Simber saw it clearly in 2011. Ultimately, jobs and not actual progress in space seem to be the driving force of the program. Even if it never actually flies, the SLS may still meet its primary mission requirement, delivering federal funding to the states and districts of those in Congress with a particular interest in NASA's budget. Even today, many of the SLS's supporters defend it as a jobs program. The Obama administration reluctantly agreed with Congress to fund the SLS program in exchange for support for the commercial crew program that would send U.S. astronauts to the International Space Station on Boeing and SpaceX capsules as soon as this year. Boeing won the core stage SLS contract based on its prior contract for Constellation. If all went as planned, the SLS's first launch would be for Exploration Mission 1, or EM-1, an uncrewed mission around the moon in December of 2017. But as we all know, all did not go as planned, and the launch date for the EM-1, which eventually became Artemis 1, moved from December of 2017 to July of 2018 to November November to December of 2019 to June of 2020. In November of 2018, less than a year after moving the launch date to June of 2020, NASA acknowledged that the revised date is unlikely, and it didn't launch until November 16th of 2022. Throughout this period of delays, the cost of the SLS went up. NASA has spent $11.8 billion since it began developing the SLS in 2011. An additional $11.2 billion was allocated in the White House's 2024 federal budget request for future work on the SLS from 2024 through 2028. NASA plans to use these funds to develop core stages, rocket engines, and other components for the SLS, ultimately to increase the vehicle's efficiency as well as the amount of cargo that can be delivered to the moon for Artemis. All in all, the SLS program was ill-conceived from its inception, inept in its execution, way over budget, and way behind schedule. NASA is clearly paying for unwise decisions made over a decade ago. So in the end, will NASA actually go ahead and replace it? Well, Nelson finally gave his thoughts on the idea as follows. There is only one rocket that's ready to launch, our SLS, and the Orion space capsule at its tip is also the only vehicle in which the crew can survive the return to Earth. At some point, Musk would like to be able to do the same with his Starship, but we have to deal with the practical here and now. Well, Nelson seems to blow off the idea of launching crew directly on Starship to the moon instead of the SLS, but also doesn't sound like he hates the idea. Nelson talks about the here and now and states that the SLS slash Orion pair is the only rocket ready to launch. Some may argue that the SLS is no more prepared to launch than the fully stacked Starship we saw earlier this year. However, the SLS has a much clearer path towards launch and obviously more development time under its belt. So when the administrator says we have to deal with the practical here and now, he's talking about the short term. To NASA, the SLS is ready, and for now, it's the only rocket in the near term to launch the Artemis crew. Although it wouldn't be wise for NASA to stick with this mindset into the late 2020s, Starship should be well-tested and flight-proven, assuming the development phase succeeds. It would in fact be practical for NASA to move away from the SLS when a commercial competitor becomes available like Starship. Between cost savings and less reliance on Congress footing the billions for yearly launches, like the later plans for the Artemis program show. Well folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a Patreon by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.